He was a giant of Saturday night telly, probing celebrity interviews, and most of all, a great journalist. Sir Michael Parkinson joined me in his favourite pub to talk about his connection with Nottingham and plenty of showbiz gossip. Let me talk to you about your art, which is the interview, the chat show. Because that's changed, hasn't it? It's really It's a talk show. Talk show. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> It, I mean, a chat show is something else. A chat show is what, yeah. what you see nowadays. That, well, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's kind of my point. And that yeah. there was a survey carried out uh, uh, <laughs> last year of what viewers value in a talk show. Yeah. And 54% of them said it was the host. They watched it for the host. Yeah. Only 44 said it was the interviewee. Yeah. Now, does that disappoint you or does that flatter you? I think, it, I think it's, it depends why the host is popular. I mean, some hosts are popular because they, uh, they're funny. And they're not interviewers, they're comedians, and that's their job, to go on there and tease a laugh from wherever he can and be funny. And be also, too, the centre of, of the show and, and not the sidekick. You see, I've always regarded my job as being invisible. Channel 8 debate with four Nottinghamshire panellists. We have Caroline Jackson, Richard Dawson, Simon Matthews and Councillor Kay Cutts. Now, parents in pyjamas. I love this new story. Parents have been persistently dropping their kids off to school. This is in the North East to a particular school in Darlington, still wearing their gym jams, their dressing gowns, their slippers, their onesies. Now, the head teacher is getting a little bit fed up with it because they're also turning up to some parents' meetings, even assemblies, not properly dressed. But what is properly dressed? Is it the school's business to be telling parents how they should be dressing and toing and froing from school. There's been overwhelming support for the head teacher from some parents. Others are saying, butt out of our business. If we want our PJs on, we'll stick them on. What's your view on it, Caroline? How much, what are they teaching their children that there's no routine to a morning, that it doesn't matter what you look like, so they have no self-respect? And if they don't have any self-respect... They might have very nice pyjamas. Well, so what? Pyjamas have a place and it's not in the <laughs> high street. In a globalised economy as a trading nation, unless we have proper access to a better single market, uh, we're actually going to fade away as an economic power. And to go back to this marvellous idea that in glorious isolation, Nobody we will be able to arrange care. everything we want with the it's Europeans not. but not actually have to pay any obligations okay. Ken, Ken, it would Ken, be Ken, a Ken, disaster. Ken, and, uh, let Roger, me challenge no, isolation. Calm down. Okay, we, Ken, we, go on. We are permanent Briefly. members of the UN Security Council. We are members of the G G8 or is it the G7. We will, re we will recover our membership of the WTO which we've, which we've farmed out to Europe. We are one of the most globally interconnected countries in the world okay. and you're saying no, we'll no, be no, isolated. No, no, that we, is we, nonsense. We pool our sovereignty in order to belong to all those. I'd love to bring. I'd love to. <laughs> Let me just, Serena. Now you're you're listening to this. We have the same debate in Ken, the modern world. Well, this is the same debate, I fellas. Do so. uh, uh, I, can I please have lives. Graham Norton's red chairs for the next Channel Eight debate, and they can go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Serena, this enjoying that. I know it is <laughs> fascinating, <laughs> and, it, and it's very, and people feel passionate about it, and we're going to yes. have this until yes. perhaps 2017 now. I'm just wondering, what are you able to draw conclusions? When oh, you hear this conclusion. debate going on, because the decision is in our hands as members of the public who will yeah. be voting, which slightly frightens me because I don't know who to believe. Um, I, I would like to stay as part of the European Union. and I, is, that, again, is that based on uh, the, the, the economics of it? Is it, where, is it where, where are well, you getting that I, sense as from? As someone who works in the university, I see great benefit to kind of still being a part mm. of it in terms of the research monies and the, and the, and the, kind of mm. the stuff that comes our way. Marsha called her cafe a super kitchen, and before long, dozens of people were using it, and they were getting a three-course meal for £2.50, much less than the cost of eating at a restaurant or even a greasy spoon. So how can they do it so cheap? This warehouse in Chesterfield is packed full of goods no longer wanted by supermarkets. OK, so come and have a look at all this incredible food. Yeah, that. that would feed a family for a couple yeah. of weeks. Things like this, things like meat, meat-based products. And you think, you know, these yeah. animals have been killed and then we're chucking this in the bin. We Hot just dog think sausages. Crazy. And um, these last for about a million years, don't yeah, they? Yeah, a lot of this stuff is, you know, and again, you'll see that it's not 
we're not allowed to um, circulate food that's reached its um, sell-by date. It has to be um, within date. And again, all of this food is within date. Take yourself back to when you first came to a depot like this and you saw the amounts. I think actually even when we first got our first delivery of surplus food, I actually cried and so did one of my colleagues because I think you realise it's really emotionally effective when, you, when you're dealing with people that are hungry or that they're isolated or they're having some types of problem, they really need to congregate around food and for whatever reason they might not be able to afford to. And you realise, hold on a minute, this is food that is absolutely loads of date on it, it's really high quality, there's loads of it, and you think this is not even the tip of the iceberg, this is the icicle on top of the iceberg. The food is delivered to the super kitchens every two weeks in return for a membership fee, and it's usually enough to keep them going. And venues like the Corner Cafe in Nottingham look forward to their lucky dip. Now, of course, the challenge for all the cooks in the super kitchens is you don't know what you're going to get from one week to the next, do you, on the back of that lorry? So we've got... We've got, we've got... You've got yoghurts there, you can see those. We've got about 30 of those. We can use those tonight, definitely. Just finally on, on the chat show guests, I've said culture has changed, you know, clearly it has over the last few decades. And um, when you interviewed Helen Mirren back in the 70s. Ah. Now, I hate to bring this up because we've been getting on so well. Yeah, but it's now listed on YouTube. Um, it's had millions of hits mm. as, um, as a kind of example of how attitudes perhaps to women in film have well, changed. Yeah. Of do course, you, the you, 70s. How do you feel about it? Well, it's different. I was part of the 70s. You find me. You'll find me uh, a 2017 man living in the 70s. There wasn't one. That's right, indeed, yeah. indeed. And, and, and there most certainly wasn't one living in journalism, mm. let me tell you. But I, mean? I think, in a way... And the Granada all... television, I mean, let me tell you as yeah. well, if you're a female, you're looking to get through the door. I mean, it, I'm not proud of that. I'm just saying that people should understand the mores of the time. Absolutely. And the and the and the way that I mean, what's what seventies television now? I mean, it's, it's racist. It's a story. Women are hateful figures. Gays, God Almighty, unless you were comedy figures, you couldn't mention the fact, you know. And I thought actually your question was legitimate in that, and this is well, the one that people harp back to. Is basically. Because you're so good looking, does that stop you getting serious roles? Because that's the way it was back then. Well, exactly. That was the, that was a point. But also, too, I have to say that that um, uh, even now, uh, in today's enlightened times, if I were faced with a, a young actress who walked on wearing a dress which covered very little of her body, as I recall at the time, and also had love and hate stenciled on her on her, her hands, yeah. and was wearing a big feather boa, right? Which you were sort of tickling people yes. with. Um, I don't think I treat her as a serious person. Yeah, yes. Do you, do you speak these think days? At all. Do you meet at all? Do you talk what? about those days? I, she doesn't like me and I don't like her. But it doesn't stop her uh, doing the interviews with me. I've done four since. And we laugh about it. We laugh about that time. I want to talk about, well, a very weighty topic next pets. Ah. Not only are our waistlines expanding at an alarming rate, so are the waistlines of our pooches and our moggies and our bunnies. The PDSA says fat pets are on the rise. They're getting bigger, and who's to blame? Well, surely the owners. So, how about sanctions for pet owners that are overfeeding their animals, feeding them to an early death? Should they face penalties? Uh, what are, you, what are your thoughts, Martin? I've got to plead Whose guilty. fault is it? I've got to plead guilty. We had a wonderful cat called George. It got so fat, Sally had to take it to the equivalent of the Cats Weight Watchers Club once every three weeks to get it back down to about a five Tory or six. A Tory MP owns a fat cat. I mean, whatever next. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> we, and I'm going to use a big word, anthropomorphise. Who's? Our pets, don't we? We treat them like humans. We think, I love a bit of chocolate, let's give a bit of chocolate to the dog. I love a roast dinner on a Sunday, let's give a roast dinner to the dog. And I, I've got friends who feed a whole roast chicken to their dog uh, on Sundays, oh. and it's massively fat. Yeah. It is a hot, it is a very fat dog, but they love it so much. They think it's enjoying the food, but if and you that's love what they're. Animal so much, then you would want it to be healthy. The same way, if you love your child, you but would you want your child exactly, to be healthy. But we've got fat kids. 
I know, and that's a lot of the time through neglect, isn't it? Dog that it ought to have vegetables instead of its meat. It's not about that. It is with, it's about with quantity, isn't it? It's actually. about quantity, and it's also about the exercise as well. Yeah. And it's the same for human beings that if you eat more, then you have to exercise more. If you're going so, to overfeed your dog, then exercise I mean, I'm, more. I'm being slightly tongue in cheek with the suggestion that f the owners of obese pets should face cruelty charges. But say that were to be introduced, would that not send a very strong message to other? areas like parenting of mm -hmm. overweight children is that a good place to start but I think it's about people taking responsibility for it's something that they've chosen to have and I think that you start with animals because if 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 you've got you know an overweight dog then what's to say that they're that if they're it, not just being locked in a room it, and not cared for in other ways if it's a indicative dog is starved and is emaciated the owner faces cruelty charges yeah. and that dog will face an early death through starvation if a dog is so fat it's got heart disease, it's got diabetes, that will face an early death. Why shouldn't the owner face cruelty charges? Absolutely. I, I think agree. they probably should. It's one of Nottinghamshire's most beautiful and recognisable landmarks, Newstead Abbey. And it's the home of a brand new music festival called the Robin Hood Folk Festival. And there's a really interesting story about why the festival is here. I'll tell you that in a moment. First, some music. <laughs> Excuse me. Are they actually sharp? They're sharp They're not enough. dummy blades. No, they're sharp. I've got a lovely scarf from them just there. <gasps> uh, what's your name? My name is Greg. And I, I fancy a go because I can juggle with balls, so it can't be too difficult. Do you want to give it a go? Do you know, actually, <laughs> you're doing a pretty good job. I'm just going to head off and listen to some music. All right, then. Yeah, yeah. Probably the best plan. In the three of them anyway, we have Hannah, Ruth and Ray Venon. Uh, you love your nature, don't you? How many other songs are written about nematode worms? None. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'd like to hear one, I would. Mm. Yeah. I doubt there's a love song. I think you're probably the only person that would write a love song. Yeah. Well, how does the nematode worm dance go? Robert, it's going to happen this time next year, so let's see you then. Bye for now.